Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be doing part three in the solid design pattern series. This video, we're going to be focusing on the LN solid, which is the Liskov substitution principle. Uh, if you don't know what that means, which most of you probably won't, because I didn't until I first learned about it, then obviously I'm going to be explaining that in this video. I'll be giving you a code example where we don't implement this principle and how it can become problematic. And then I'll be, you know, mentioning how you can go through your code base and try and find this kind of problem, because we've all probably done it in the past at some point. I've definitely done it in the past and obviously the principle exists for a reason it's because a lot of people have done it in the past so um, we're going to be refactoring a very simple example so you know you might see it and think you know I don't have this thing in my game that's too simple or you know trivial but believe me you'll have probably even more complicated versions of this where it becomes even more problematic than this example uh, I just think this example I've made is a good way to show you you know how to spot the problem and how to fix it so let's get into that now but of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, so special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link will be down below. If not, then there's also links down below to my Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and other social media. So if you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. But now let's get to the video. Okay, so as always, I've made a, another folder in my prefabs and my scripts and scenes just to do the different examples. If you guys want access to this, you can go to my GitHub, link is down below. You can download this project, look through it, do what you want with it, it's up to you. What I've got here is I've got the same scene as always. Uh, I mean, it's a different scene, but I've got the same setup. We've got an item logger, and all it is is just a class, which I'm going to go into the code in a minute. And all it does is it logs data on the item that is on the thing with it. And if there's no item, it doesn't log anything. So I've got a consumable here, which is a type of item, and it says the name description and use text for this example all you really care about is the name but i thought i'd put some more data on there anyway and if i press play it's going to log the items data and it's well it's just going to log health potion which is the name and then you know press e to drink which is some data about the item now this is already where the problem arises this is a very short video basically what i've got here is i've got get an item on me now we can get the consumable because it inherits from item so get an item on me if it's null don't do anything if it's a consumable, log that. Now, that might not seem bad, that's not even much code, right? But if your game has a consumable class, the chances are, you, the reason you've inherited for a reason, you're gonna have other classes, right? You're gonna have, now this doesn't have to be to do with items, right? I saw Jason Wyman, the guy who runs uh, Unity 3D College, he did an example of this using, um, using different characters and NPCs and stuff. So you had a base character class, different NPCs and uh, stuff inheriting, and each of those things used um, different logic for how they take damage. So he had a damage dealer class that said, if it's an NPC, do five times damage. If it's a uh, flying, I think he used flying NPC or something. If it's a flying thing, then it doesn't deal damage. It doesn't take damage from me, right? So he had the logic for the different types of implementations in the class that deals the damage. And in my case, I'm using an item example. So I've got an item logger and it knows about the different types of items and it says what to do in those different scenarios, which works, obviously. It means the consumable class has barely anything in it. But the problem with this is, just like in the open close principle I did my last video on, you're having to expand this code base in here. You're gonna have to say else if the item is a weapon, I don't have weapon yet, but I'll do that in a second. If it's a weapon, then debug.log uh, the uh, item dot name and then maybe you have some other data about a weapon right you might say like weapons are for attacking you know it's a stupid example but you get the point now a, a, re a way I use this in my game was having um, in my inventory I said like if the item is a quest item do this if the item is a weapon do this if the item is an arm piece of armor do this right so if, let's let's say for example your inventory had a use button on an item and different items do different things when they're used you don't want the thing that calls the use function to say depending on what implementation it is do a different thing right you just want to um let those things themselves decide what to do based on their own implementation so this whole uh thing about segregating the logic is this item logger should just basically say item gets the text to log or item log your text and then each item will store what to do based on its type so it's very similar to like using an interface to abstract the logic um, but yeah the whole point of the principle is this class should not be casting into the different types right the types should have their own logic rather than this having logic based on the types it's all about who has the um, the who has the logic. So if I did make an I if I like copy and paste consumable because it's very similar to weapon in the sense of it inherits um, 
So if I do weapon.cs and then call this weapon, obviously a weapon might have an int damage. It'll be a, bit, a lot more complicated than that, but you get the point. 10 damage by default. And we just say, if anyone wants to access the damage, then they just say damage. It's a getter, so they don't change it. Um, that has to be an int. And there we go, we've got a weapon class. So now, the item logger is obviously going to be happy. It's saying, ah, well, if it's a consumable, log that. If it's a weapon, log that. So it is actually containing logic based on types, but that shouldn't be its job. The entire point you make a class inheriting to do different things when they're different types is so you can implement the different logic in those types. You know, it's kind of the entire point. So if I say consumable, no, it's actually a weapon now, right? Um, the, the prefab doesn't matter what state it's in. I've just left it as a new item name. So it's going to say new item name. Um, oh, actually, it doesn't say anything, apparently. Did I not put the item name in? Uh, uh, apparently, it just doesn't have a name, even though it did. But regardless, weapons are for attacking, right? Oh, I didn't put the right thing. So item.name, the item is apparently an item logger. That's interesting. Wait, sword. Sword. Item logger weapons are for attacking. Oh wait. Name returns name, new string name. Yeah, I'm actually confused. Why is it doing that? Am I doing something really stupid here? The item that we get name. Ah. There we go. <laughs> I just capitalized something wrongly, my bad. But yeah, now if you press play it will say like sword. Um, weapons are for attacking. There you go. Sword, weapons are for attacking. So now, if we want to add more stuff, we go in here, else if, and th that's breaking one, the Liskov substitution principle, um, and it's also breaking the open close principle because we're adding logic to this class to expand upon it, when in reality, you should just create new classes that inherit and, you know, it's all fine. So let's, I'm not going to make other classes, I'm just going to refactor these ones. Uh, so if you do want to see, like, the bad code compared to the good code, you'll have to watch the video. Whereas in my other examples, I've made separate classes for good and bad, but what we've got here is we want to say if the item no we don't that's the point we want to say item dot uh, display text or something like I'm, I'm just gonna go with that right so the item class is gonna need to have a display text function whoopsie daisy so as I said in the last video some of these different principles overlap quite a bit but we, we want public abstract um, void display text Okay, let's put that as a function down here. So it's saying it's a function our child classes have to implement, and um, it's called display text, right? So now we go into the item, sorry, the consumable class. It's not happy because we don't have that function that it says we have to implement. So we implement it. To display text, we want to say debug.log. Um, we can say name press e to drink me now another thing right about abstracting the logic and data this e right well you see the problem with that is the um key bindings right if you have if your game has key bindings this class shouldn't know it, it like it hard codes e right now right which is a problem you should actually go and grab the key for the use key from the input system that you make so that's another abstraction you know rather than this class having to know or hard code what the interact button is it should just say whatever the interact button is get it right and in the end you're not going to just have a simple drink me on the item maybe you will but you probably won't but yeah press e to and then we can even just say here use text right now one problem if i can do this right <laughs> if we had this back in the other class, we would have to access from the item as a consumable. We'd have to cast it and then access its use text to display that. It makes more sense to say, yo, item, log your stuff, right? Consumable, do this. Whereas uh, in a weapon, I mean, let, let's just go back to the consumable and copy and paste that and change it. So in weapon, we just say, um, this, like, um, when you swing me, I deal damage, damage, right? So now, 
we've got different implementations that use different variables in the same function. And this just says display the text, whatever it is, right? I don't care. You're a sword that deals 10 damage. Well, um, when you swing me, I deal 10 damage. And obviously if I changed that to be um, a consumable, which is a health potion, Press E to drink me. Or, equally, you could just go, throw me, right? Press E to throw me. If it's that kind of consumable, you can write the data on there. The, the point is, the item logger shouldn't know how to log an item. It should just know items can be logged, I'm gonna go call it, right? Th that's kind of the point. So it shouldn't contain the implementation. It should just tell the things to do their implementation. That is pretty much the principle. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. There's not much else to show. Obviously, um, examples in real projects are gonna be a lot bigger than this, but anywhere you see, right, if you see anywhere in your game, you're casting objects excessively, right? Doing like a single cast at a certain place for a certain reason, there's, there, there might be a good reason for that. But if you have an if else, like for different types, if your thing needs to handle multiple implementations of different classes, it shouldn't just cast them all because you're gonna you know down the line you're gonna add another type and you're gonna have to add another if else you're breaking the open close principle it becomes problematic and it's just a lot cleaner to tell in this case the items to know how to log themselves based on their own data rather than this class to log them based on that data um and yeah in another case like in my inventory for example in my game with the inventory rather than the inventory knowing how to add different types of items based on if they're a quest item or a weapon why don't the items themselves know how to add themselves and you just pass them the inventory? So the items then take the inventory they've been passed and they add themselves based on whatever happens, right? So if it's a quest item, maybe you can't remove it from the inventory. You don't want to have like a boolean on every item saying can or can't remove because then you're going to have to say like, well, if can remove, then do this. Or else can, if not can remove, do this. And you're going to have to keep track of like a boolean on every single item. And let's say in your game, only the quest items are items that can't be added. Oh, sorry. Let's say in your game, every item can be dropped from the inventory apart from quest items. Well, then why have a boolean on every single type of item in the game when you can just be like, oh, well, the quest item class is where we can't drop items. So then you want to, you know, handle the logic there. But if that's the only case, then maybe you, you can get away with doing a single cast saying, oh, if it's a quest item, do this. So long as you don't have then if it's a consumable, do this. If it's ammunition, do this. If it's a arm, piece of armor, do this. That's when the problem happens. You just don't want to you know, get yourself into that big mess. But I hope you understand why this is an important thing. If you do or don't implement this in your game, it doesn't really matter in the sense that some games won't have a scenario where this is necessary. You might already have your game in you know, logic segregated into the implementations. But I know a lot of new users, including me when I was new, did just chuck loads of, you know, oh, if it's this, do this. So any way you see that, it's a, it's a red flag, you know, try and fix it, uh, try and make it cleaner to use. It'll help you down the line. You'll become less stressed later on when you're trying to deal with it. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to leave video suggestions down below. I've got links to all my social media below, all the above. You hear this in every video if you're regular here, so I don't need to repeat myself. Uh, just check the description and all the information's there. But yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video where we'll be covering the interface segregation uh, principle, um, which is just all about interfaces. And I've already covered interfaces in the past and we've used interfaces in the open close principle, but that video will be you know, dedicated to interfaces and how it applies in this principle. And then we'll end off with the dependency inversion principle in video five that'll be coming sometime next week. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Thanks as always. Peace.